If there is one thing I did choose to be the most passionate about, it would be the trans which used to run in Metro Vancouver. With the help of some friends, here is the story of the Lulu Island Line. Meet Gabrielle. She is the coordinator at the Stephen Trump Museum in Stephenson, and she has helped me with things such as research and given me many opportunities such as becoming one of the museum's long-term volunteers, becoming one of the greeters, and an interpreter. Here's my other friend, Nathaniel. Meet Nathaniel. He is one of my closest friends, and while he may not know much about trams, he is very good at filming and giving feedback. On to the show. The story begins when the National Electric Tramway and Light Income Limited launched the first streetcar service in Victoria on February 22nd, 1890. Shortly after, the Vancouver Electric Railway and Light Company Limited launched the first Vancouver streetcar system on June 27, 1890. Following that, the Vancouver and Westminster Tramway Company launched the New Westminster streetcar system on October 8, 1891, and the Vancouver New Westminster Interurban Line via Central Park and Burnaby was created in the same year. With the Global Depression in the 1890s, all three companies went to receivership and were amalgamated in 1895 into the Consolidated Railway and Light Company. The newly founded company was forced into receivership again after a streetcar service accident in Victoria, the Point L Bridge disaster, resulted in 55 deaths and was reorganized as the British Columbia Electric Railway Limited in 1897. In 1905, the BCR would lease and electrify the CPR Lulu Island Line. They would later assign free trams to the line, Eburn, Stevenson, and Burnaby. They were later renamed to 1206, 1207, and 1208 respectively. Unfortunately, none of them remain aside from 1207, which is now preserved at the Fraser Valley Heritage Railway Society. 21 stations will be built in Richmond, with the terminal station being at Stevenson. As the interurban and streetcar service became more popular in the early 1900s, the BCR would later purchase 28 more 1200 class interurban trams to service both the Marple Stephen Line, the New Westminster Line, and the Burnaby Lake Line. The interurban line would not only connect Stephen with other communities, it would help transport freight from local businesses. With the introduction of the interurban line, it was not only revolutionary for Richmondites, as it brought electricity to Richmond. Fun fact, electricity came to Richmond before running water. Not only did the interurban line bring electricity to Richmond, it also greatly improved the quality of life in Richmond, as it now only took 57 minutes to get from Stevenson to downtown Vancouver, whereas previously they had to travel to Vancouver with a horse and a carriage. Unfortunately, by the late 40s, the Rail to Rubber campaign was introduced. The Rail to Rubber campaign was created by GM and other oil industries. They argued that the streetcars were old and outdated and that they should be replaced by trolley buses, which were smoother, cleaner, and more efficient. The pressure from the automobile companies and the oil companies proved to be too great, and thus streetcar service began diminishing in Metro Vancouver. The last ever streetcar run was on April 24, 1955, that ran between 1 to 5 p.m. Richmondites, however, refused to part with the tram, and they even brought up to the BC Supreme Court, and they managed to convince the BCR to continuing the line for an additional three years. The last ever interurban tram run was on February 28, 1958. So most of the interurbans were either burnt or scrapped, or both. A select few were saved, However, many of those do not survive today. About only seven interurbans and three streetcars from the BCR still remain. So what is left on the Stevenson line? Well, this is tram 1220. 1220 is a fully restored original interurban tram which used to run on the Stevenson Marple line. In 1912, the BCR ordered 28 new 1200 class interurban trams from the St. Louis company. In 1913, Tramcar 1220 and its 28 sister cars arrived in BC. They had originally arrived in the emerald green and gold color scheme. However, in the 1920s, they were recolored to this now iconic red and cream color. This is one of seven remaining interurban trams from the BCER era. It is over 112 years old and is currently on permanent static display at the Seaton Tram Museum. It had originally served the BCR until 1958, when it was sold to Trolleyland in California. It was later sent back to BC in the 80s, and was found in a derelict state on Mitchell Island. 
and thus the Staten Interurban Restoration Society was formed in the 80s. In 1983, they performed a full restoration of the tram. However, it was put into storage. In the early 2010s, it was brought out again. However, it was found in another state of disrepair. And thus, the city of Richmond performed another full restoration of the tram. It is currently on display at the Stevenson Tram Museum in Stevenson. It's on permanent side display and admission is free. Despite no longer mechanically functioning, visitors are still able to board the tram and explore many of the exhibits at the Stevenson Tram Museum. They can relive what it was like to ride the tram and they can check out how things used to work, such as the bell, the coin changer, and the handbrake. And so that's it. That is the story of the Lulu Island Line. Not much remains anymore. There's some few tidbits here and there, such as old railroad crossings, maybe a power pole, but not much is left. And that's it. That's my presentation. I really like trams, so I wanted to make a presentation about it. The tram in many ways was revolutionary because not only did it bring electricity to Richmond, it connected communities. However, it was deemed as outdated and old, so it was eventually overruled by the buses.